This is the Read to Lead podcast, episode 352. I went on this journey of trying to find my thing, and I kept thinking that my purpose was in a calling, a title, something out there. But what I realized was my purpose was actually with me all along. Hey, welcome to the show, and thanks for listening. It's the Read to Lead podcast. My name is Jeff Brown, and I've developed this podcast as a way to help you narrow your reading list, because I believe that if you want to achieve success in your business and in your life, that intentional and consistent reading is a must. Hopefully, the Read to Lead podcast can help make a lot of books just a little bit more accessible. Each week, I sit down with a successful and inspiring author, and we dig into their latest book. And today, that author is my friend, Jonathan Milligan. We'll dive into his brand new book called Your Message Matters, how to rise above the noise and get paid for what you know. I'm going to ask Jonathan to share why your message matters and why it's your responsibility to share it, the many advantages of building a business based on your advice, the four focusing habits to effectively market your message, and much more. Jonathan's book is going to give you a simple four-step framework to build a real business. He shows you how to believe, define, craft, and market your message so that you can fulfill your unique purpose in this life. Well, Jonathan Milligan is a guy I've had the uh, privilege of knowing uh, for uh, quite a few years, uh, first virtually and then had a chance to meet him in person uh, f- about four years ago or so, I guess, at a conference that we both attended, broke some bread with him. He has since mentored me in my business, and I'm excited to have him here to help do the same for you. He's an author, blogger, speaker, and online business coach. He's the creator of the popular weekly podcast and live stream show, Market Your Message. And for about uh, 11 years now, he's run his own portable lifestyle business online. And today he teaches others how to build a business with their passion, their story, or message. And he's here today to share with us how to do exactly that. That book is called Your Message Matters, How to Rise Above the Noise and Get Paid for What You Know. After uh, a few self-published books, this is Jonathan's first traditionally published book with the same publisher that I'll be publishing with in about nine months. So Jonathan, welcome to the Read to Lead podcast. Excited to finally have an excuse to bring you on the show. (laughs) Well, Jeff, as a fan of this podcast, I couldn't be more excited to be on here. So thank you for having me. I love this podcast. Well, it's so so glad that you're here. And and again, I've learned so much from you and excited for listeners to be able to learn from you today as well. Um, I thought I'd start by just uh, giving you a chance to give us a sense of kind of what you went through career wise, like you know, what are the other things that you did? You haven't always done what you do today before getting to that point of deciding to to carve your own path. Yes. And if you look at my journey, you would think this is a wandering child. He doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. He's, you know, he's in his 40s and still trying to figure it out. (laughs) And yet at the same time, I I, I took the journey that I needed to take. Mm. And so I started off as a high school teacher. Both my parents were educators. So, you know, growing up, my dad was a high school teacher and basketball coach. My mom was an elementary teacher. And uh, so I just kind of assumed that was the role. I had a heart to want to teach and coach because it's a great profession. And on top of that, I married an elementary teacher. So (laughs) it, uh, it seemed like it was running in the blood, right? Well, after about three years, I realized this isn't exactly where I'm supposed to be. There was this unsettled desire in me. And I love the kids. I love to coach and teach. Yet in a weird way for me personally, the four walls of the classroom felt very confining to me. I wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. I didn't know what that was. And so after three years, I decided not to renew my teaching contract, Mm. which was a very difficult decision because I was only married for about three or four years. Uh, We had our first baby and our second was on the way. And I wanted to make sure I was providing for my family. And I Mm. battled this between, am I being selfish to try to go pursue something I'm more passionate about? Or do I just need to be happy with where I am and take care of my family? And so that's how my entrepreneurial journey kind of started. And I think a lot of people struggle with that question. You've probably run into them on your journey that are like, am I being selfish for wanting to do this? Should I not just be content with with where I am, when you run into others who are sort of facing that same decision, what advice do you tend to give? Is, is, is it now or never? 
Well, I, I work with a lot of people who feel like they have a story, a passion, a message to share. They they want to write, they want to teach, they want to speak, they want to coach online, and they want to make a difference in others. And what I came to the conclusion to, which I try to share with them, is if you really think about it, if you have a message to share, if you have a gift, if you have a talent, if you have something to offer the world and you don't step out and share it, maybe that's being selfish. Mm. It's thinking about it in the opposite way. So if you have something to share, then you almost have a stewardship responsibility to share it because there are people waiting for your help. But you've got to step out and start sharing that message, start sharing that gift, start stewarding it. And I think that's the big aha for me was to realize that somewhere down the road, there's probably people waiting for my help. Mm. And and today I'm so glad that I stepped out and did it because I, you know, on my journey, I've been able to help people and see their lives and their businesses transform. And that's been an amazing experience. And I would think the reality of it is, too, that if you don't do that, you're, you're one of those folks who, who gets to the end of your life and has regrets for not having taken that step. Yes, absolutely. That, that, that's the thing is, you know, getting to the end of your life and realizing that, you know, fear in a lot of ways held me back from things mm. that I necessarily shouldn't have been fearful of. In fact, in the book, I talk about my story in the very, very beginning and I mention a quote that I absolutely love from Susie Kasem, who says that doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. Mm. And I think what happens for us is we fear failure. It's why we don't step out. It's why we, we don't think our message matters. It's why we don't take that chance. We don't start that podcast. We don't launch that blog because we're worried about failure. But if what Susie says is true, then the real dream killer is doubt. Mm. And when we start feeling doubt, doubt to not do something, maybe we should treat it like a engine light in our car that says, wait a minute, listen, doubt's the real dream killer. Don't let doubt stop you from moving forward. Well, related to this is is the role that courage plays in all this. Can you talk a bit about the concept, Jonathan, of, of what you call present courage? Yes. And so this this concept kind of came light to me uh, in, in this was in 2019 when uh, back when we did, you know, in-person events, I had an <laughs> in-person event. It was two days. We had about 70 or 80 people in the room. It was a two day workshop. And the night before I wanted to go back into my YouTube channel and go all the way back to my very, very first video. This is back when I was doing more career coaching. And I wanted to play live for the audience my very first YouTube video because I would show how terrible I was <laughs> and how embarrassing it was because people sometimes have this concept of, oh, you just have the magic touch. You just you know how to do a podcast or you just know how to do video. And the truth is mine was terrible. It was creepy. It um, it was it was it was ugly. <laughs> but I found it. And then here was the amazing thing. And this is where the point of where I'm going. The date I published that first video was exactly 10 years earlier to the date. And I sat back in my chair and I was like, wow, kind of had that, that moment yeah. of if I could hop in the DeLorean as a Back to the Future fan <laughs> and go to that younger self who was nervous and unsure about hitting the publish button on YouTube back in 2009 and tap on his shoulder and say, you don't know this. But there's a whole room of people waiting for you 10 years in the future. You have to do this. Mm. You have to have present courage in this moment to hit publish because they need your help. There's a whole room of people waiting. And what I want for people to get from this book is the same is true for them. Every person you admire, you can trace their journey back to a moment of present courage. And Jeff, I'm sure it's true in your journey. You go all the way back. Yes, you came from radio. You understood a lot of this. But still, I'm sure inside of you, there was this little bit of hesitation. And it took that moment of present courage to do that first episode to get things started. A little bit of uncertainty if this is going to work out. Right. And so for all of us, we have to right now choose 
that moment of present courage because there's a whole room of, of people waiting for us in the future. I was telling, um, I'm going to name drop here, so I, forgive me, but I was telling Seth Godin a few weeks ago that the first year that I blogged, I blogged under another name. I, I was afraid to put myself out there. Uh, and, and you talk about you know podcasting and radio. If you go back to, if they still existed, if the cassettes that I once had of me on the air my first week in radio, I mean, we would all have a hearty laugh hearing me. It was just absolutely atrocious. Just how is this guy ever going to make a career at this? Uh, so I totally get where you're coming from. What, what have you found to be uh, some of the advantages, Jonathan, of building a business based on, on sharing your, your advice? Yeah. So I love this concept of like taking your advice and that's the easiest way to explain it. People are like, well, how do you make money online with you know writing, teaching, speaking, coaching? It really comes down to being willing to share advice about the topics you're passionate about. And the wonderful, some of the wonderful benefits for us is you can run this business anywhere, Mm. especially as we are going through seasons of change and there's so much uncertainty. My business has been able to just continue to move along and I'm grateful for that. So you can do this type of business anywhere. You can start it on the side. So even if you have a day job, that's how I got started. I started my my website and my blog on the side. Mm. And, you know, it was open all day long while I was still doing my day job. It's great business to start on the side. You can also make an impact. You can feel the impact you're making because you're working directly with people. And uh, back in the days before, you know, after I quit teaching, I was an executive recruiter for a while for accounting professionals. And the thing I heard over and over and over again, Jeff, was I just don't feel fulfilled in my work. I feel like I, I do my work. I pass it along to somebody and I never know the impact of like mm. what I did. I just pass along to my supervisor. Here's the next modeling forecast on how to be more profitable in the business. Pass it off. I never know if I'm making an impact. But in this type of business, you can see and feel that you're making an impact. The other thing is it's a, it's a very wide profit margin type of business. Mm. If you're selling digital courses and products, you've got yeah, 90 to 95% profit margin on purchases. So those are just a few. Um, the other thing I would say is you can you can run this on a small team. You don't have to have a large overhead of, of 30 employees to have a seven-figure business writing, speaking, teaching, or coaching online. So mm. those are some of the benefits that I love. Well, that's a bit from part one of the book. Uh, there are four parts, and part two of Jonathan's book gets into uh, defining our message. Jonathan, would you be willing to, to share a bit about your message framework? I, I think this is where you get into people and passion and purpose. Yes. So since 2011, uh, I originally started, on this was my second blog, was bloggingyourpassion.com. And so from there, I started working with people who were just getting started. They're trying to figure this out. And after working with them for years and years, I kept trying to you know, redefine, refocus, make the process simpler to help people get started. Mm. Because it can feel daunting on like, I don't know what I'm good at and I don't know who my audience is. I don't know what I'm passionate about. And so over the course of working with lots and lots of people, I developed something that I call the Ignite Your Message framework. And it really comes down to three things, purpose, people, and passion. Just like uh, a fire has to have three elements, heat, oxygen, and fuel, you need to have three elements to really have a powerful message. So purpose, purpose is how you show up best. What is your unique gift? And yes, you do have a unique gift. Mm. You may not realize it. You may need other people to speak into your life. And a little bit of that, we go into the book helping you give you some exercises to help you uncover your unique gift. And so that's kind of part one in that also for influencers. And again, I keep using writing, teaching, speaking, and coaching because those are the four ways that I think you can earn money and make an impact online with a message. I also have in the book what I call the influencer voice assessment. And I put the full assessment in the book. This is something I used to just give to private coaching clients. But there's 32 questions. And from that, it helps you to identify, are you more of a writer, a teacher, a speaker, or a coach? Because that's another part of this purpose piece. And the reason why I say purpose is because, Jeff, I told you earlier that I went on this journey of trying to find my thing. And I kept mm. thinking that my purpose was in a calling, a title, 
something out there. Mm. But what I realized was my purpose was actually with me all along. It was how God made me. And if I look inside and I see how was I naturally wired, what is changeless about me, that's the thing that how I show up best is what I'm going to bring to any situation, whether it's Mm. a podcast, a blog, whether it's, you know, working in a nonprofit or working in a for-profit company, how I am wired is how I'm going to show up. So that's purpose. And then people is who do you want to serve? And we go into some of that in the book about identifying Mm. exactly who you want to serve. And then finally is passion. And passion is really about what problem are you passionate about solving? And this is something also that people think passion is very, very heavy. Like passion (laughs) equals pressure. I got to find that passion. (laughs) What's my life's passion? But here's the way I define it. Passion is just finding a problem you're passionate about solving for the next two to five years. Just start there because here's the reality and the conclusion that I came to. Your passions will change, but your purpose remains. Who you are, how you show up will always, that's you. That's how you show up best for others. But guess what? Your passions may change and that's okay. I made my first living online doing career coaching for accountants. Then I said, I want to teach blogging. Well, now we have rebranded in the last year to talk not only about blogging, but we're talking about writing, teaching, speaking, coaching, and helping messengers, influencers, get their, build their audience and get their work out into the world. And so when you have those three things together, that's what produces a really powerful message. Well, you just highlighted what I think is two of the key points from the book, at least for me as I read it. And that's the idea that your purpose doesn't change, but your passions will. And that finding that purpose isn't some externality out there. It's right under your nose, in other words. And that to me was just exciting and comforting. It really is because then we're not trying to become something we're not because that was the other thing. Mm. You know, I... As a person trying to find my way, I was like, man, I want to be a speaker. I'd love to speak on stage. And then I would see these people who were so charismatic and (laughs) funny and witty. I'm like, that's not me. I'm more the laid back, (laughs) practical, resourceful, helpful, step by step guy. And yes, I can maybe be funny or witty every once in a while, but I need to not try to be them Mm. because there are people who maybe don't need the funny guy. They need the Slow down, be practical, show me how to. And so just be you and it's very settling. Uh, I appreciate you saying that because I think I'm, I'm very much like you when it comes to my stage presence. But then I'll see somebody like a John Acuff and go, oh, I want to be that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to be funny like John, but uh, that's not necessarily uh, what people need from me. You're exactly right. Um, to effectively market our message, this is part three of the book. You say there are four, uh, I think you call them focusing habits. Do you mind unpacking those a bit? Sure. I like to use the illustration of an old fashioned hourglass because everyone can picture that. Hopefully you can. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe as the younger generation comes up, they're like, what is that? (laughs) But, um, you know, the the little thing that you can use for your board games where you turn it over and the little grains of sand or the salt or whatever goes from the top half to the bottom half. Oh, now I know. Okay. Okay. It's very skinny. (laughs) Yeah. It's very skinny in the middle. So the way that I describe it is there's, and this was really helpful for me because this came on my own journey of like Mm. trying to build an audience online. You can go down a black hole. I mean, just social media alone. (laughs) Mm. It's like a black hole. I I need to have, I need to have a podcast. Oh, I need to have a membership site. Oh, I've got to have this course. Oh, I got to write a book. Oh, I got to do that. And it's like, what's the next hot thing? And what happens is our energy gets expended out in so many different directions. We actually get nothing done. And so what I started doing was studying the habits of the people I wanted to become, Mm. the people who were already ahead of me on the journey. And what I discovered was they spent most of their time in four areas, four habits, create, capture, compile, and connect. Mm. The create habit is when you create free value to attract an audience Sort of like we're doing right here. I mean, your podcast has done that for your brand. It's it's allowed you to to expand your brand and, and, and attract people by the awesome interviews that you do. And I think that's, you know, that's a great example of the create habit. You know, whether it's a blog or a podcast or you know, YouTube videos or live streaming, 
pick something where you're adding value mm. for people. But then how do we move those people into becoming buying customers? Well, that's the skinny part of the funnel, which is capture, the capture habit. And that's, you got to have leads to have a business. Mm. You need to have an email list. And so we spent an entire chapter in the book talking about my favorite ways to build a list. And you can do that from your content that you provide. And it's a great way to get people onto your email list. And then at the bottom part of the funnel is the compile habit. And the compile habit is your packaged products and services, whether it's a book, a course, a coaching program. I mean, there's so many. I actually go through about 12 different income streams in the mm-hmm. book that writers, teachers, speakers, and coaches can use. But that's where you make money. You develop a relationship with people on your list and you let them know about your products and services. And then finally, as the connect habit, go all the way back to the top. If the hourglass was open at the top and the grains of sand represented your people, the people you want to reach, you've got to pour them into the top of this funnel. The way we do that is via traffic. And in the book, I talk about the three types of traffic, free, paid, and partner traffic and how you can get traffic to kind of fuel all of this because we got to we got to get people to come consume the free content we're creating, get on our list and then buy our products. And that's what that whole section about is about is helping demystify all of this stuff we feel like we need to be doing and really boiling it down to spending your week doing four things. There, there is uh, something that you said that I want to kind of dig into just a little bit deeper that you actually unpack uh, later in the book, I think in part four, living your message. And that's this thing that a lot of people struggle or fight against between, you know, what do I sell and what do I give away? Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think you make the point, uh, and I'd love for you to expound on this, that you earn a living online, not in spite of giving away your best stuff, but because you give away your best stuff. Yes. And I used, it used to bother me because I would... Um, I'd have, you know, uh, my my flagship course back doing blogging your passion was a $1200 product and I would just get these stories of people that my heart would break for them like I just yeah oh, man I wish maybe I maybe I'm making this too expensive you know uh, I, they need this but I can't you know I was just that wrestling with that right mm. but then I came to the conclusion wait by doing the free creation that we're doing for me it was thousands of blog posts that I wrote mm. It was comforting to say, I am providing a service for people who just feel like they can't afford some of the products and services I have because I also need to value the content that I have because if you don't value it, other people aren't. If I said all Mm. my courses are free, I would probably get less attention Mm. because people value what they pay for and people use what they pay for. That's the other thing is if I just gave it away for free, people may not even use it. They're like, oh, well, maybe I'll use it. Maybe I won't. But when, when people pay, they pay attention. And so that's the other part of it as well. And so I think you can be okay with charging what you're worth for your products, your services. If you're at the same time, you can direct people to the free podcast, the free blog post, the free YouTube videos that they are welcome to consume and learn from. Mm. Well, before I get into some questions not directly related to the book, Jonathan, I thought I'd ask about your thoughts on developing teaching tools Uh, that you get into toward the end of the book, some of the reasons this can be beneficial to both you and your audience. Yes. And and you've probably seen this more than anybody, Jeff, being a a fan and a lover of books, is um, some of of the best books out there have a framework. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective People when I was 19 years old. And I still remember that framework of those seven habits. And that framework created a book, but then it also created other things. It created coaching, it created a membership site, it created planners, it created a whole industry from that teaching tool. Mm. And so if you're an influencer, meaning again, you teach, write, speaker, coach, you have a message, I would like to think, I I guess I would encourage you to identify the problem you want to solve and then think about how you can create a teaching tool. I call it like a one page teaching tool or framework we see this in lots of other places, you know, um, uh, in the book, good to great, we've got the hedgehog concept from Mm. Jim Collins, right? You've got Don Miller's story brand framework of the the hero's journey. And look, I mean, look what he's done. I mean, he's done a book, he's done online courses, he's done in-person workshops, private consulting, all from that one page framework. Mm. 
And so this is a great way to kind of, of, of create multiple income streams. And this is what I did with my very first book. I created a framework for my first self-published book. And then I wrote out a plan to create seven income streams in 12 months, starting from the self-published Kindle book to doing a real paperback to an audio book to an online course that mirrored the book to offering coaching to creating three keynote speeches, to doing coaching, and then a in-person workshop based off of the book. And I did that in 12 months, one at a time, and created seven income streams from my teaching framework. That's how powerful a a teaching tool can be. Mm, I love how you laid that out. Anything else from the book? Jonathan, you want to make sure we know before I get into some of those non-book related uh, questions? Yeah, the the only thing I would say would be the messenger manifesto in the book is something that I think would be a real encouragement to people because it is difficult when we're trying to get something off the ground. We have a passion or a message to share. And I wrote a messenger manifesto. Originally, I just wrote this, this manifesto for myself to just read every morning that would kind of refocus me on the day. But then I said, you know what, I need to share this. I started sharing it and I was just amazed at how well received it was on the blog. So I included it in the book and here's how it goes. As I begin my day, I will choose to work from a place of mission and not fear, service and not greed, humility and not pride. I choose today to offer hope to the discouraged, purpose to the doubting, direction to the confused. May this be my vision as I work today to build the business. And what that did for me, Jeff, is it really helped me understand my why to my daily work. Because it's easy to get locked into how many blog comments did I get? How many more reviews do I have on my podcast? Mm -hmm. How much more money came into my Stripe account today from yesterday? It's easy to get lost in that stuff Mm. and forget that we are we need to focus on just transforming people. And the easiest and fastest way to scale your business is to get success for the people who follow you. Mm, mic drop right about that. <laughs> right about then. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, uh, give us a bit of insight, Jonathan, into the history or your history with uh, with reading and the impact of, of books in your life. You mentioned Seven Habits uh, a moment ago and Good to Great. How has the habit of, of reading consistently and with intention played a role in your success, would you say? It's been everything. Absolutely everything. And uh, I started reading my freshman year in high school, no, in college. Freshman year of college, I was dating a girl for about three years. We broke it off. I was away, didn't know anybody hours from home. And it's either my parents or my one, my grandmother sent me a book from Billy Graham. Mm. It was called Hope for the Troubled Heart. I devoured that <laughs> book. And then I started reading other books. I, th- I think I started reading uh, Max Lucado. Then I came across John Maxwell, Developing the Leader Within. Then I started coming across more business books, and it just became like I always had a book or two or three in my hand, always, always highlighting, always learning, always indexing the front of the book, of the highlights of the book that I liked, so much so that I think that's why, and I I shared this story in my book about why my wife said, you're going to write a book one day. Mm. When she told me that, I was probably 25 years old. I had no audience, no book concept, no writing background, but she saw how much I loved books. And I will say this, the other thing I will say on this is, and you've probably experienced this too with with writing your own book, Jeff, is by consuming books, it makes it a little bit easier to write books Mm -hmm. because you have quotes you can go back to. I don't know how many times I went and pulled books off the shelf and I'm like, I, you know, I remember this story that this person shared that I think would be great and to help me with this. It's like it gives you ideas and illustrations. And so for us thought leaders, reading books makes you resourceful. And here was what I heard this from John Maxwell when I was younger, and it always stuck with me. And it said, you need to always be preparing because when opportunity shows up, it's too late to prepare. Mm. And so I didn't even know what I was preparing for, Jeff, but I knew that as I consume books and I learn from books and as I do that sort of thing, then hopefully when opportunity eventually shows up, I'm going to be prepared because I'm going to be hopefully the most resourceful person I can be. 
And my publisher doesn't know it yet, but uh, we'll be quoting Jonathan in my book. <laughs> <laughs> With your permission, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, 2021 is, is sitting in front of us all. As you look ahead in the new year here, what are you excited about? What are you looking forward to uh, the most? The thing I'm looking forward to is, you know, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. Mm. It's been difficult. I didn't tell you this, Jeff, but the week that my book launched, I found out both my parents tested positive for COVID. Oh, no. The same week. And so it was this, do I, and they live about an hour and a half from me, do I drop what I'm doing? And just, I mean, they're, they're more important than this crazy book. And thankfully, you know, my dad spent a little time in the hospital. He was out. My mom never had any worse symptoms and they recovered from that. So we've all, we all have stories like that and, we, mm. and maybe even you know, stories that are beyond that. I put a post out uh, on my social media and it was a it was a picture of my wife and I in Yankee Stadium as a Yankees fan. Mm. I always had a dream of going and attending a game at Yankee Stadium and I did in 2019 in July. We went there for our 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 wedding anniversary. Mm. And I shared that post because the reason we started that is I have a goal of wanting to visit every major league baseball stadium. Mm with my wife and travel the country and attend every single one uh, as a baseball fan. It's, it just would be a lot of fun. Mm. And COVID stopped that. Like it stopped a lot of dreams. Right. And this is what I put. I put, we've all been through a rough year. We all have dreams that have been stopped. Then I put something my mom has told me since I was little. If there's one saying my mom has told me since I was little, it's these words, this too shall pass. Mm. And some of us are like, well, it's about time because this has been <laughs> way too long. But in the grand scheme of things, this will pass. It will. And so that's what I'm looking forward to is um, going into a new year, believing that this too shall pass and keeping on the dreams and the goals that we have. Well said. Another mic drop. <laughs> uh, well, the book, again, is Your Message Matters. I highly recommend it. Subtitle, How to Rise Above the Noise and Get Paid for What You Know. Uh, Jonathan, again, has uh, mentored me in my business, been very helpful in my journey, and I think he can do the same for you. Visit his website, jonathanmilligan.com. There's also yourmessagemattersbook.com. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you sharing your insights and all about your new traditionally published book with Baker Books. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. For more on Jonathan and his new book and to dive into the links and resources he and I chatted about today, you can visit the show notes page for this episode. That's readtoleadpodcast.com slash 352 for episode 352. The release of my book is still eight months away, but you can actually pre-order it right now on Amazon. That's the only place you can pre-order it. It's called Read to Lead, the simple habit that expands your influence and boosts your career. To pre-order it now, go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash book. That's readtoleadpodcast.com slash book. In the coming weeks, look forward to conversations with Roman Mars, Alex Kantrowitz, Todd Henry, Michael J. Gelb, Pamela Fuller, Reggie Williams, Mitzi Perdue, and Joanne Lublin. All that and more on the way right here on the Read to Lead podcast. Well, that'll do it for this week. I hope to see you for the next episode. Until then, remember, leaders read and readers lead. Read to lead.